Hello, dear students. Lecture number two, part one of two, Cultural Studies course, level seven. And the title of the lecture is Richard Hoggart. I am sure that you are familiar with the name by now because we have mentioned Hoggart's name as one of the two British founders of the academic discipline of cultural studies. Today, we are going to study details about Hoggart, about his life and about his work, the books that he has written. He is a 20th century British cultural critic and academic. His dates, as you see, 1918, and 2014, so he has lived for almost a century. And he is a cultural critic and academ academician. Whose work emphasized the value of British popular culture. To him, British popular culture was authentic, was highly significant, it had great value, and it would be a great loss if it is destroyed by any other factor. This is the main argument of Hoggart's work. He valorized or knew the real value of British popular culture, and he wanted to see it flourish and thrive. And because during his lifetime, he felt that this British popular culture was threatened by a number of factors, as we shall see now, he felt it his duty to focus in his cultural study on analyzing the value of the popular culture and on attacking the factors of destruction, according to him, the factors of destruction that want to erase this culture. One of his most famous books is the book entitled The Uses of Literacy. It was a book that was first published in 1957. And this book lamented the loss of an authentic working class popular culture in Britain in the post-war era and of course, the war here is the Second World War. This book is considered to be a key text, a founding text, not just in the discipline of cultural studies, but also in the discipline of media studies. Those students of media they are bound to be familiar with Hoggart's book, The Uses of Literacy, in the same manner that you, as students of culture and cultural studies, are familiar with the book. So it is a foundational text. And as you see, it attacked the imposition of a mass culture through advertising, media, and Hollywood movies, or in other words, the book attacked the phenomenon of Americanization. Let us remember that in the aftermath of the Second World War, America rose to be the world power number one, a position that America or the United States has been occupying up till now. Whenever we think of the biggest power in the world, we think of the United States. It was a position attained, especially after the Second World War. 
And whenever you are recognized and acknowledged by everybody to be a major world power, then you are going to impose your culture all over the world. So the Hollywood movies, the American television shows, the popular fiction, pulp fiction, if you like, the newspapers, the tabloid magazines, the advertisements, all these were aspects of the mass media that was mainly American, as we said, and that attacked the whole world, including Britain. So to somebody like Hoggart, who, as we said, valorized or placed great emphasis on the value of British popular working class culture, he was aghast, he was so angry and sad at the same time that he was witnessing how this popular working class culture was retreating and being defeated gradually, step by step, in front of the mass attack by the mass media that was mainly an American mass media. So in his book, The Uses of Literacy, he was trying to understand the changes happening in Britain due to, as we said before, mass media, especially the American mass media, and he called this phenomenon Americanization, this is one name for the phenomenon, or massification. Massification as if you are like obliterating the authentic local culture in a certain country and replacing it with a uniform mass culture that does not make a difference between Britain or France or Italy or America or Africa. It is a uniform massification of culture all over the world. And this massification or Americanization, according to Hoggart, was a negative phenomenon that needed to be discussed and attacked. The main argument of this book was that we, and by we he meant the British, we, the British, are moving towards a mass culture through the mass media, especially Hollywood movies and television. And the second argument of the book is that the culture of the people, he always said or mentioned this expression, the culture of the people, which is popular culture, in other words, the culture of the people is being destroyed and we need to do something about it. So this is the main argument of Hoggart's book. And as we said, the tabloids, those magazines and newspapers that talk about scandal and the news of Hollywood stars and these things, the advertisements, that want to spread a culture of consumerism so that you look at the advertisement and you are influenced by it and you go and buy something even though you don't need it just because you have seen an advertisement in a glossy magazine or on the television screen or in the movies. All these aspects like tabloids, advertisements, Hollywood movies with the star culture, in which people would like to imitate the cars driven by stars and the perfumes and the clothes worn by them and the cigarettes that they smoke and these things. According to Hoggart, all this was mass culture. It did not arise from the people themselves. It was imposed upon them from above and by above here he meant the British authorities that allowed this culture like to come and to be propagated in the country and also from abroad. So it is an alien culture because it is coming from another place, which is America in this case.
So the book was attacking the mass culture, the mystification or the Americanization, and it was defending or trying to defend the popular culture of the people in Britain and recording or documenting the gradual destruction of this popular culture. In other words, Hoggart was making a contrast between two types of culture. The culture of the people, which is the popular culture, authentic, self-created, arising from the people, developing according to its own laws and dictates, integral. This culture is contrasted to a mass culture which is quite the opposite, alien, artificial, imposed from above, and so on. This is the main argument of the book that we said was a foundational text in at least two types of academic discipline, cultural studies plus media studies. The argument of the book may be interesting, but the methodology of the book, the way in which it was written, is equally interesting and equally novel because the book was not just written in one way. The book was written in a number of ways. That is why we can call its methodology to be interdisciplinary, because the book was partly a sociological study. Hoggart was engaged in a sociological study about the changes happening to British society. At the same time, it was partly autobiographical, he was discussing elements from his personal life because, as we said, he comes from working class family and we will discuss his familial background later in details. So partly autobiography, partly sociological research and, of course, partly and mainly cultural criticism. And throughout the book, you can feel Hoggart's Marxism. He is a Marxist and this Marxism comes through and appears through the pages of the book in his sensitivity to class issues. He doesn't have to be preaching Marxist doctrine, but whatever he is writing seems to be like motivated by his great interest in class issues, especially in the welfare of the working class to which he belongs. At a much later stage in Hoggard's career, and to be exact, in the year 1995, Hoggart published a book with the title, The Way We Live Now. As you see, the title itself is very telling because one of the definitions of the term culture is the way people live. This is just one of the widest definitions of the word culture. So, in this book, Hoggart was describing certain aspects of the way the British lived towards the end of the 20th century. As you know, his career has expanded to include the whole of the 20th century. He wrote many, many books and several articles and all these things, but we are just choosing a few titles for your benefit. So in this book, The Way We Live Now, he was, Hoggart was regretting what he thought of as the decline in moral authority that was provided by religion in the past. In this sense, you can consider Hoggart to be a conservative. Actually, many people think that if you are a Marxist, then you cannot be religious at the same time. But Hoggart here belies such an assumption. The man is both a Marxist and a conservative religious person who believed that religion provides a sort of moral authority 
that cannot be replaced by any other cultural institution. And because towards the end of the 20th century, there was a decline in religious observance in the UK in general, he thought that this was a major reason for the morality issues, the decrease in moral authority that the British society suffered from, according to Hoggart. The book also has another theme, a very interesting and contemporary one. Education and the systems of education are, of course, the, one of the main components of modern culture in any country. So as a cultural critic, in this book, Richard Hoggart was examining the British educational system towards the end of the 20th century, and he was lamenting the fact that there seems to be a concentration on vocational training, what we call technical education or vocational education, at the expense of the humanistic studies. We all know that vocational education is the education that prepares people to work as technicians or to take up employment as skilled workers or craftsmen. For example, you can be a skilled car mechanic or a skilled plumber or skilled electrician or any of these crafts or artisan works that you are trained for at vocational centers. Trade schools, technical schools, community colleges, institutes of technology are usually places where students can receive this sort of vocational education, either after finishing middle school or even high school. So it is a type of education usually contrasted to the academic education provided by universities. And in the year 1994, just one year before the publication of Hoggart's book, the UK government introduced a program known as the Modern Apprenticeship Program. And the government allocated public funds that were necessary for this program. So this decision on the part of the UK government could well be the precipitating factor behind Hoggart's 1995 book that we are talking about. Hoggart feared that technical and vocational education and training that is sometimes known as TVET, Technical Vocational Educational Training, would produce a generation of British youth who are ill-equipped to cope with what he thought of as higher culture or literary culture or the humanities in general. This happened although the UK had a much less percentage of students trained at the vocational centers than if we compare it, for example, to other European countries such as Germany. But even this small percentage was too much for somebody like Hoggart, and he attacked vocational education in his uh, book, and he attacked the British government policy towards education systems in general. Now, we have almost come to the end of this lecture, and we still have another part related to Richard Hoggart for next time. Thank you and good luck.